everybody. Hope you guys are having a great Sunday. And uh, Sundays, we've been able to sit here and catch up with Albert Castro. Ah, so at this point, we're, this is number five. So we're five hours into this. There's going to be hour number five of just talking about, which seems pretty incredible. This is the last call. The bar is open with Beth and Greg, but this is the last call episode um, that we aptly named basically just to give people a chance to talk about kind of their amazing stories and tell a little bit of background of how your lives have gone and like an in, in incredible kind of detail in a lot of these cases, it, which is, this has been so far four hours and the next hour is going to be pretty good. And we're going to kind of wrap stuff up a little bit, but you, you still got a long way to go. Um, but thank you all for joining in. I hope you guys have had, had a chance to see just a glimpse of Albert's background and his life and what it's taken to go from basically living in a very small town to having an amazing life. And it was very much like you were, you drove yourself to do that. And every step of the way, it was really, you made a decision to do that. I knew what I wanted. Right. And I got it. Right. Which is pretty incredible. There we go. Um, and that was, that was awesome, yeah. you know, and, and to be able to do that. So last week we talked, I'm just going to give a quick recap. We talked a lot about some of the cases, some of the amazing goofy ass cases and some of the more intense cases that you were on, some of the stresses of being an agent in the DEA, especially back in the 80s, 70s and 80s, right? I mean, really, it's pretty incredible. Like, I mean... It's not like it is today. We've talked about this, just you and I, kind of offline, and it's different nowadays, oh, yeah. right? Much you have the... yeah. In fact, to be honest with you, I think undercover work is almost a thing of the past. There's very little undercover going in this area. I don't know about Northeast yeah. offices. Or, Down here. Right? But uh, it's almost a, a, a gone... Uh, art, lost yeah, art of art, being yeah, an yeah. undercover agent. Yeah. I'm sure there's still some... Right, that are out do they're yeah, doing that. Still a little bit of that, but mostly everything's now electronic and whatnot. right. So they can track money transactions yeah. and different things like that. Where yeah, it's yeah. I mean, it's just different. It's changed, it's right? Lot, and that's how tech a lot has changed. The technology it of started the age. changing in the um, early nineties. Okay, ninety two was when I retired. But the internet starts coming out. Yeah, exactly, and you can and track bank records easier and. That's just the way things go. Right. Yeah. And that's fine. Yeah. I mean, that's just how it is. Right. So, so yeah. So it really, towards the end of your career in the DEA, basically you had kind of, you had a, a pretty major physical issue that happened. You yes. had to have open heart surgery. Open heart surgery in 1990. Right. That was almost the end of my undercover career. Right. After that, I was put mostly on a desk and, I became the just say no representative for DEA, going okay. to good schools, yeah, colleges, and things of that sort. So I so give speeches that. and like yeah. talk in front of like the uh, classes and stuff yeah, like that. Exactly. They went to the schools and gave out just say no program. I was also the coordinator yeah. for just. Say I remember no. I had that. We had a. It was like remember I don't know if Beth or the kid or Ben or Albert ever had lock ins where you go sleep overnight and it was yeah. like a whole just say no kind of weekend kind of thing where right. you go lock down and hear the hear hear everybody come in and the local police department comes in and you know and do all that sort of thing so it's kind of interesting yeah so i mean it's interesting so what made you decide to ultimately retire from the uh, dea well no i mean i didn't really want choice to retire, or but it was the rule when you reached age 56 you're out automatically no oh else. No ants, apes, or butts. It's changed now. Okay. I think you can go to 57. Oh, shit. Whatever. Yeah. It's the same thing, but basically. But then... Uh, is, that a, is that a... Like, because you're a federal... Why? Why? Because, what's like the... Because I'm carrying a gun. Oh, okay. Okay. And that goes for FBI, Border Patrol, DEA, IRS. If you carry Anything a gun... Anything that anybody that's an agent carries a gun, you're out at 56. Interesting. Okay. I didn't know that. Yeah. Maybe you told me that a while back and I just forgot about it, but that's interesting. That, yeah, so so you transitioned out of the DEA, right? Right. 
and you decided what was the next chapter of your career your life kind of career at that point for about six months i was a fraud investigator for an insurance company okay which was totally boring <laughs> yeah and the worst part about that if you caught the guy dirty yeah and you so wrote, what kind of so it's insurance fraud so like yeah, medical insurance yeah, or you wrote the report and you made right. it into the prudential or whoever had hired me to do it yeah and uh, they wouldn't do anything about that. They just would drop the guy. And they said, wait a minute. He did committed fraud. Why don't you charge him with fraud? Yeah. But they wouldn't. They just dropped the guy. Interesting. So that's it. That's so it you're like, me. ah, nothing's coming of this. Yeah. So we're going to. Yeah. I said, that's it for me. Then uh, luckily I ran into an old friend by name. Of, well, I can't. That's fine. You don't need to. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, who found out I certified instructor. Okay. Uh, in, in federal and state law enforcement. All so right. I could teach either state or federal. And uh, he asked me if I would do schools for the new agents coming out of the academies at different countries. Oh, uh, okay. Oh, so so overseas. Not I was thinking DEA for some no, reason, but no. okay. So, so I agreed. And I said, sure. Sounds like fun. And uh, I must have worked some... Three, four weeks till one, two o'clock in the morning, translating stuff from English into Spanish so I could present through the course. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because if you're going yeah. South America predominantly. So what countries were you in in South America? I was in, well, it's Central America. Or, oh, se okay, Central yeah, America. Okay. Yeah, uh, I was in, uh, starting from the bottom, Guatemala, Honduras, El Salvador, Nicaragua, Mexico. Okay. Mexico was a prime. That was your big one. Yeah. There. Okay. So I, I did that for 14 years. And you just taught classes? We taught them how to begin investigations, how to do surveillances, how to handle evidence. Okay. And all of that that goes into that. Who were the, so who were your students? Are they, all, are they Mex, uh, like, so Mexico, are they the Mex, Mex, Mex feds? Mex, yeah. In, in Guatemala was the dawn meaning División de Operaciones Antinarcóticas, D-O-A-N. <laughs> okay. Doan. So what, Doan, okay. Yeah, not, in Spanish and English, this is just... A, a Department of Narcotics, yeah. basically, yeah. okay. <laughs> and you, I was getting the agents just coming out of the academy. All right. And they had a bunch of them. I, you know, so uh, the very first one I did was in El Salvador. All right. And these guys were green as... They didn't know what they were getting no, themselves into? No. They just knew they were getting, they're going to be. The fun part we had in, in El Salvador was the surveillance part where yeah. we had taught surveillance and there was a judge as one of the students and he begged to be one of the rabbits. The, 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 the bad guys, yeah. plays the bad guy. Yeah. But this is for training. Yes, for training. Okay. So we started, Tommy Har, my part, teaching partner, was the other rabbit. We okay. called him rabbits. So, because they're just trying to get away, basically. Yeah. Yeah. So that was fun because the judge had been watching too many movies. <laughs> he pulled all kinds of stunts that he saw in the movies, and most of them worked. Yeah. Because these guys were green; they they had no. They didn't idea. know any better, right? Yeah. 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 So, one of the funniest one was when he he knew he was being followed by three, and the bus came to a stop at that bus stop, and there was people getting on, and he gets on in, but the three guys follow him, get on the bus. And as a bus started to roll away, he gets out to the back door. Jumps out. And, and he just waves goodbye at him. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, that's, that's hilarious. The judge was having a great time. That's awesome. Yeah. How many, so uh, when you were down there, so what types of classes did you, so you said surveillance? Well, the very first is how do you initiate an investigation? How do okay. you start? Okay. Okay. And uh, the next thing under that is how to uh, create informants. All right. Which are always the meat. They're the ones yeah. that get you yeah. to the cases and stuff like that, right? How to, how, to, how to get informants. The next step after that was comes evidence handling, warehousing of the evidence, and also surveillance. and uh, Conspiracy, although only two countries have conspiracy laws. All the and go there. back to, we've talked about this in the past, so conspiracies where you have two or more, two or more people, people involved, involved in, in the deal. Yeah. But uh, at this point, when I left Guatemala... It was only Guatemala and Nicaragua had the conspiracy. The other countries, including... It just wasn't part of it. Yeah. It's either you're dealing drugs or you're not yeah. dealing drugs, right? Right. 
I mean, like in Mexico, like you're fucking guilty yeah, or you're not. Exactly. Mexico didn't have, they might have it now, but back then okay. they didn't have a conspiracy. They didn't even know what conspiracy it was. We they, had to explain. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah. So you taught those classes and then you said you taught for 14 years, which is another, I mean, you've already had, so you've had, we'll, we'll go over this here in a minute and you've had several careers. Yeah. Really, when you yeah. think about it, like 14 years in, for some people, that's a career. That's a, I mean, 20 years in the military is a career, yeah, right? right. And, and you did another 14 years after you've already been a police officer, customs, DEA, well, a teacher before that, right? Yeah. Um, you know, been in the military, been in the Marine Corps. You've, you've done, had so many things that you've done to serve the United States and to serve the people of the United States. And it's, it's just incredible to me. So a lot of... And you're not going to believe this. I probably will. Today is what? <laughs> August? The August? The 9th, my nephew's birthday. To this date, I still miss DEA. Do you? Of all of them? Yeah. I miss DEA. Yeah. The excitement, the stress. That was the adrenaline and yeah. The, yeah. Yeah. just the busting the fucking bad and guys. Well, and you know, you get old like me and they put you out of pasture. Well, I mean, um, but the, 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 the you know how they always say it's kind of one of those things. It's like you've forgotten more shit about being a DEA agent than most DEA agents mm-hmm. probably still know because you, it was a different, it was a different time then. Like yeah. you said, you had to go. I mean, he's mentioned like having guns put to his head and knives put to him and all of these things. Oh, the and the funniest part is, so when I met my father-in-law, he wasn't my father-in-law at the point, obviously, but I just da- started dating Beth. Remember? And you had an accident when you were traveling to yeah. Arizona and Beth and I had just started dating, right? Yeah. And he gets off, Beth calls me because we lived in we had separate places and I lived right around the corner and she's like, hey, can you come help me get some stuff off my truck? My dad fell off the truck. Your knee went out or something like that. And you fucking split your head. I, yes, I hit the corner of the building. It's yeah, he all, fell all off brick. and had to have how many staples? Like 10 or some no, shit? No. It was 14 staples. 14 staples in his head, Yeah. right? So I meet this man the first time, and he goes, that nurse came at me with a, with a needle. I, I don't know him at this point. I've this, never met him. That needle was just this big. I'm not scared. And my right. wife says, don't turn around. Don't turn around. Because she <laughs> knew I have this phobia about needles. I know. But, but the funny part was, he's like, he tells me, in me being 28 years old, never have met you, I didn't know you were in the DEA at that point because that's not something that like Beth had just throws around, right? And um, and he goes, and I've had a gun put to my head, and I've had a gun here, and I've had knives in my side, and all the shit. And I'm like, who the fuck is this dude, right? I'm like, what are we talking? I'm like, I'm just coming over to help unload a grill out of the back, right? So it was hilarious, and I'm like, I always laugh about that, and I always think fondly because I'm like, what in the shit's going on here, right? And it's, it's funny because, you know, you think back and you're like, you're afraid of needles, dude. Of all the fucking things to be worried about. That's right. You're <laughs> I have this phobia about needles. Oh, I don't know. I, have a I don't know. But needles. nothing else. Like, it, it used to turn my stomach when I would go into a shooting gallery. You know what a shooting gallery is? Where, where the heroin addicts. Heroin, heroin, or waiting to get their drugs their or whatever. Fix, yeah. Their fix. And when it got there and I would see them poking with a needle in their arm yeah on sores that had ulcerated yeah just all fucked up needle, and i'm going Ugh. I, yeah it, it just turned and then i would think i want to get this guy yeah because that's just terrible i mean he's he just dealing poisons what he was that's doing. it and that's what it and comes down him, to and making money out of it right and that's what it comes down to so in 1996 you decided to start teaching we'd mentioned that just a second ago so you were in mexico guatemala it's a lot of places what made you i mean was it when you decided to start teaching, was that just like a natural change into well, say, hey, I'm going to start it, it passing was, this information like forward? I was still part of DEA. Okay. Okay. Right. I was not. I know. But I, I had that feeling like I'm still DEA. I'm now teaching these guys how to do the job I did. Right. And that, so I mean, that's and equally that was my as go-getter. valuable. That right? was my go getter for it. Yeah. Right. I mean, that makes sense that that's. Passing that knowledge on, like I yeah. said, that you had as much knowledge as anybody out there. Oh, yeah. You know, of how to build a and case. You know, and the best part is I had two partners doing it. The first one who was really connected, he passed away 
after the first year of teaching with me, okay, he, they developed cancer, liver cancer oh, or something, and he passed yeah. away. So I always said, I did one course by myself, and that was a lot. You have to. Talk. It's a lot of yeah, yeah two so weeks much work. Talk every day from, oh, mostly from eight to about five or six. Right. And I ran into my good friend and brother, Tommy Hoare. Right. Who I've met. Yeah. Several and, times. And so we became a team. Okay. And we did so many schools together. We were more together than we were with our wives. Right, because you guys are just traveling back oh, and forth. Back and so forth. they'd be like two week schools. Two week schools then all over the place. Two weeks and then go back again for another two weeks at a different place. Mexico was the best one because Mexico has thirty two states. Okay. And every time we went to Mexico, it was at a different state because they have their own academies. All right. So I got to see a lot more Mexico than some of the Mexicans did. Right. Some of the people, the actual. And on the nice places, yeah. I would take my wife. Mexico City, I took her about two or three times. Cancun, twice. Nice. You know, but uh, yeah, it was, it, it made me feel like I was worth something doing that. Right. And you, again, it, you you can pass that knowledge on that you've yeah. learned so much. I, I mean, because you don't, a lot of the things that you've brought up over the past four weeks or four shows, whatever, um, they aren't things that people inherently know, right? Like where you were talking about, there was the case where you're just switching the money and that's shit that you have to think of like, like on the spot Oh yeah, and be smart yeah. about it. And like, how can I work this and make it so that these gullible. Yeah. The, the, the thing about drugs, it is you always, they, they see the dollar signs yeah, in their eyes. Exactly. It's that old cartoon. You're looking at the money and yeah. we're playing the old cup. Switcheroo kind switcheroo, of thing. Yeah. yeah. You know, I would count it and like that, and here, okay, here, and I would give it to him. He would count it. He would give it to the other guy. And just switch it back. Right. back to me, and I, we kind of the same thing. Right. So the thing so is. we reached 60,000. Right. So you think about that, but, like, you had to think outside the box all the time, and that's that knowledge that, like, if you're brand new into something, like, you just don't even know, like, you're, like fuck. Yeah. And all they know, in a lot of cases, is that, this, especially down there, it's life or death. I mean, even in, even in your cases, it theoretically was life oh, or death yeah. in a lot of those cases. Oh, yeah. And, you know, when you, you have to pass that knowledge along. And I think, you, I mean, 14 years of teaching, oh, yeah. I, I certainly good, think you pass a lot I, of that I, on. You know, and I found some good agents and yeah. some so-so agents and some that I would wash out because they, they couldn't comprehend what we're trying to say yeah. or do. And they were just... Close mind. Just couldn't figure it out. Just couldn't. So at the end, it was always 39 to 45 students. Mm -hmm. And at the end, we would always burn two or three, meaning... They just couldn't make it there. They couldn't make it, yeah. Yeah. And and the people in charge of the academy appreciated that. Because you were honest about it. That's the thing. It's like some people just aren't cut out for certain things, and that's yeah. totally fair. I could, right? have, I could have passed everyone. But that's not right. It's not, no. Right. No. It's if got he it. didn't catch it, he's going to get killed. Exactly. All right. So right. wash him out. Yep. They'd it's make it's him better for him. agent. In other words, he'd be a regular agent, not in the narcotic. Just a federal or whatever yeah, in Mexico. Not in the division, okay. So. Yeah. And that's, that's, that's fair. So you had mentioned um, one of the things that you, we were talking out back a little while ago, and you're like, one of the things that was going through your DEA career, I'm going to go back a little bit on this, is um, all of you guys, all of the people you worked with, your life was set on being a DEA agent. That and correct. that was like life yes. for you guys. Yes. You know, even though, you, like we've talked about, you had, you know, you have a family at home and you always were a great man. Come home, be honest I, and yes, be. I never went out drinking or anything like that. Right. If there was nothing going on, I was home with my family. Right. Now, I have to mention one thing. Okay. I had the most wonderful wife in the world. Oh, absolutely. She backed me up to the penny. Yep. And many times, like we say in the game, left her waiting at the altar. I would call him on the way home to get the kids ready. We're going to go eat out or mm -hmm. get a hamburger or whatever. Halfways there, they would call me. We got a deal going on. Yeah. And I would have to call her. Yeah. Sorry, you go ahead with the kids and do you know. And That's hard. I mean, it's as hard on you and, as it is on. Of course, on... she would be a little disappointed, not right. to say the least, but nevertheless, she knew that was my job. Right. And she knew I loved your job. What I was doing. Yes. And it was important. Yeah. So right? she was wonderful. Yeah. Bless and her soul. Iris. Yep. So, yeah. 
I was, I, I'm so happy, you know, that I got to know her and everything before she passed away and everything. And, you know, that was one of the bigger things, you know, and, and. Or it's called you Gregorio. 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 La Montaña. <laughs> right? Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, really, it comes down to, you know, family life was always number one for yes. you. And that was, that's, I think I, some of the stories are fun that we talk about and we, we go over those sorts of things, but it's always a continuous thread through your entire life, even to this day. Like he comes over here on Sunday nights and he goes to his other son's house, the, you know, the remainder of the week, Beth and I work, we do a lot of, we have a lot of crazy shit, but we always get to spend time. And I think that's really, really important. Yeah. And I think it, it always has been, even since I've known you in the past 13, 14 years. Yeah. Right. Um, and that's what I remember Beth always saying is he was always there. He yeah. was, that's an important thing. That's it. Always, the family always came first. Right. Sure. Yeah. Right. Bringing the swim lessons yeah. and even going to dance recitals. The, yeah, and, even when I was working on the cover. Right. I would tell the bad guys I'm sitting. I'm sitting with two or three of them at a beer joint. Yeah. And I would, my beer would get hot because I wouldn't. Yeah, you're, you're not chugging beer. You yeah, can't. Just I mean, sipping on it. And I would tell them, listen, I need to call my chip. I've got a girlfriend at the motel because when I wasn't supposed to be from San Antonio, right? right. Yeah. yeah, and she's probably worried because I was supposed to be there about thirty minutes. ago. Let me give her a quick call. Let her know, and they, they wouldn't mind. Yeah, go ahead. There's a phone, you know, pay phone back then. Yeah, and I would call, and I would say, "Hey, babe, how you doing, honey? You getting tired of waiting for me? I'll be there. Don't worry, everything's going cool. All right, we'll see you later. Goodbye." And she knew I was okay. That was the way for you to check and it. And they heard me talking, so yeah. yeah you got to kind of just play it, and yeah, she played yeah. that game too, yeah, so it was yeah, a way for yeah. her to check in. That's And that's an awesome thing. So everybody knew you were safe. and yeah. You know, so when we start going through, we were, starting to, we, we were talking again earlier, and it's like you, you have a, your life story, so to speak. You've broken it down into chapters. Yeah. When you think back, <laughs> right? Yeah. And, and you, we talked about, you said, Six and I actually wrote down seven. So we started out you being a young man, just a, a little man. kid. Yeah, right. Always in trouble. Always in trouble. Just uh, I just happened to have the luck that most of the cops that would pick me up or whatever it was, a fight or right. whatever, knew my father real well. They either took me home or took me to the station, set me down in a chair and chew my ass out and then <laughs> And then you out. kick you out. And then go walk home. Right. Yeah. So I was lucky in that respect. But right. That was chapter one. My chapter life. one. And then yeah. and then chapter two was high school and high meeting school, Iris. Meeting right? Iris and all that. And yeah, meeting your wife. She, she got me out of being in trouble all the time. She yeah. Said, either, so How did you meet her again? I, uh, when did you first hear? Because I think I remember the story of like being yeah, on horseback was, or some she, shit. Brownsville has a fiesta. Okay. A fiesta. All right. And that's every February. Okay. And it, it's called Charo Days. Charo Days. And this and the... It still school. go on, I imagine it still goes it's on, still, right? It's still going on. It's That's been cool. going on for many, many, many years. And uh, she was in one of the dances, uh, dressed as a, a, a costume from one of the states in Mexico. I forgot which state it okay. is, Oaxaca, I think. And they called them polleras. Polleras, meaning uh, dancers. Okay. And she had a, a wooden a platter, and they were dancing with that, and then doing the, the circles of Mexican dance with a always having that thing. And I said, wow, that's a good-looking girl. <laughs> the guy sitting next to me, who was my friend at yep. that time, says, hey, watch it. I said, what? It's a beautiful girl. I said, that's my sister. Oh, shit. <laughs> so I said, hey, cuñado, meaning hey, brother-in-law. <laughs> I'll stop it. Said, I need to meet her. So he introduced me to her after the show. She came over. And, and how old are you guys at this point? 16. Oh, geez. Yeah. Yeah. And so after the show, she... She came over to talk to, to Chalo. His name was Isayel, but they call him Chalo. Okay. And uh, she said, How, did you like it? And Chalo said, yeah, I want you to meet my friend here. He's a good guy. Yeah. And so I was I, I was speechless. I, 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 <laughs> Smitten. Yeah. Right? Oh, from the point, that point on. Yeah. And uh, in school, in the hallway, I would always look for her, and then I would make sure that I would get up to, to her. And, Hi. Okay, you know, yeah, you know it, yeah. Finally, after about a month of doing that, we were at the beach. Okay. My sister-in-law, who was a school teacher, uh, and her husband, who was also a coach, were at the beach with us. 
And I'll never forget this as long as I live. All right. There's this humongous moon arising that looked like it was coming, coming out, out, of the out of the sea. Yeah. Right? And we're walking. She and I are walking, holding hands along the water with our feet in the water and all that. And that's when I asked her to be my girlfriend. And she goes, well, I don't know. You're always in trouble, but oh, but I don't know. I said, well, I would love for you to be my girlfriend. She said, well, let's give it a try. Okay. That started it. And that was it. Yeah. And so <laughs> 60 years later, yep. that was still here. Yeah, absolutely. Those are the amazing stories that like, like, so Beth and I got married. <clears throat> Excuse me. She was 36. I was 30. Like, we'd be 96, right? <laughs> In 90, it's like, <laughs> I'll probably be dead, honestly. <laughs> fuck, whatever. <laughs> but no, that's where that true love. I've only, I only know one other person that's been married that, or that has that chance, and it's my cousin. And he and his girlfriend were high school sweethearts, and they've been married forever yeah, since. Yeah. And it's really one of the coolest things. Beautiful woman I ever met. Yeah, that's awesome. So... Chapter three, you went into the Marine, Corps, the Marine Corps and you went to Korea, right? right? And that was chapter three. So we're kind of like summing up some of the things that we've talked about, right? When I shipped off to Korea, I was 18. They were asking for volunteers. Marine yeah. Corps is always asking for volunteers. Yeah. That's what I told Jacob. Don't volunteer for anything. Uh, I volunteered to go to Korea. Okay. Well, was, was, it was going on pretty strong. Right. And uh, I was 18. I became 19 in Korea. And when I came home, I had already we had already discussed the marriage, yeah, over the phone before I before I went over. So you weren't home. married yet. No. Okay, you got married when you got back. So we had discussed it. I had talked to her father. I did the um, nice. Thing. Yeah, I I did that, and you told me to go talk to Iris. Yeah, <laughs> so, I was like, shit. So she's anyway, the tough one. Uh, so I get back, and just happy to see. Her. I brought back a Japanese china that was it's very expensive. Yeah. But I brought it all the way, carrying it. My, my two good buddies in the Marine Corps were Bernard Carnes, who's okay. now dead, yeah. and Terry Clark. Bernard was from Iowa, and Terry was from Michigan. But we're all with the three amigos. Yep. Everywhere we went together. In Korea, we stuck together. That's cool. And um, So I got got home, and I'm all excited, you know, and I got my blues all dressed up and all that. And I says, well, the big day's coming, so I have to go get a license. So I go. And they wouldn't give me a license because I wasn't 21 yet. I had to get permission from my... And my parents weren't even in town. They lived in uh, in Plymouth, Indiana. What do you mean? I had to... I you had to be 21 back then to get married? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah. Interesting. And so uh, my grandparents had to sign for me. My grandfather, God okay. bless his soul, he signed yeah. for me. And so you got married I, at 20 years old. Yeah. That's crazy, right? Yeah. Crazy. It was, it was, no, it was, I was 19. Or 19. That's right. Yep, 19. So, yeah, I mean, it's just incredible. You came back, and that you knew what you were wanted to do. Oh, so then we have chapter... F uh, oh, go ahead. Greg, you got to remember that I've always planned things. When I was 10, I think I told you. Yeah, when I was 10, you wanted to I police officer. what I was going to do when I grew up. Mm -hmm. I was going to be a Marine, and I was going to be a cop. Yep. And I did that. And that's something that I think a lot of people can learn from. And I think it kind of, like, people just... The, it's so kind of fast moving and shit happens so fast nowadays yeah. that yeah. we don't think about plans. So my nephew, I, th I don't think I've told you, but I've mentioned this on a, a, another podcast that we do. Uh, my nephew, Joey, leaves ships out for the yeah. Coast Guard on Tuesday. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Yep. Yeah. On Tuesday, that's he's right. 17 years old. Yeah. Right. And he's had this plan in his mind for over a year. He's yeah. like, I want to go in, did his ass fab, and I'm super proud of him. Right. But there's only a handful. Of, there, you don't see that a lot yeah. in youth. Right now. You see the target and you go for it. Right. And he absolutely is yeah. super honed in. And, yeah. and he's, yeah. I talked to him yesterday. He's super pumped about, you know, he's right. He wants to do this. And yeah. he's done all of it, all the work. He put it, did his ass fabs. He can do whatever yeah. he wants yeah. when he gets yeah. in there, go to all the school stuff. Right. But I mean, he really, you know, for myself, even it was like, I went to college. I knew I wanted to go to college. And I went to college and then I got out and I was like, okay, what the hell am I going to, it was never like so planned out as that, no. you know what I mean? No. And I'm thankful for what we have and what we've done and way my life, but it's just not, it wasn't when I was 10 years old. Yeah, You and Beth are doing just yeah, great. We'll do fine. So chapter four, which you, you became an educator, a teacher and a police a officer. For one school year. Right. And a police officer. And after that, I wouldn't sign the contract for the following year. So the principal, Mr. Paredes, well, what are you going to do? 
And he looked him straight in the face and said, I'm going to be a cop. And he goes, what? <laughs> said, I'm going to be a cop. I'm going to put some of the guys I had in a classroom in jail because I had a some black, shitheads. I had a blackboard jungle in there where I had to break up fights in the classroom. These kids were supposed to be in the seventh or eighth grade, and here I had them in the fifth grade. So they were just, yeah, yeah rowdy, they, they didn't, didn't to, pay yeah, attention. Rowdy and all that. Yeah. One of the girls ended up getting pregnant, and uh, two guys knifed somebody. They ended up in jail. So I started with 35 students, ended up with 28. In 28. One, one school year? Yeah. Holy shit. So I said, no, nah, this is not for me. This is boring. Every day, the same thing. Yeah. yeah. So I, took, I didn't sign the contract. I went home. My wife asked me, did you sign the contract for this year? Nope. I said, no, I didn't, honey. She goes, what? Why? I said, I'm going to be a cop. Oh, my Lord. She says, oh, are you serious? Little did she know what all was going to happen for the next 40 years, right? Holy shit. But she says, if that makes you happy, is that what you want? Go for it. That's it. That That's her. it. That was her. Yeah. She wanted to know that I would be a happy man. Does not stray from his marriage. Yeah. He's got yeah. everything right here, what he wants. Right. So, yeah, I he became a cop. Yep. And that's where that started. So started on the that list. was chapter four, man. And then chapter five, the DEA. DEA. Right? And that was your craziest, probably your craziest chapter. How old were you, again, when you went into the DEA? Like in your 30s? Like early no, 30s? No, no, I was, uh, how old was I? I forgot, Thirty. 36. Okay, so 36. So you already had some... Yeah, because 37 law is a cop date. Oh, 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 I didn't know that. Yeah. Okay, so you just got in. Just. Because you were already in customs and they had, they had split off and everything yeah, else as right. well. Yeah. So so that you kind of were in there anyway. So, yeah, and that was the, the, the craziest chapter of your life, I would say. I mean, you're still crazy shit, but it that was a oh, yeah. it an was incredible an chapter. Awesome, awesome career. I, yeah, I always make a joke about it. If you go to the old office... There's scratch marks from the office door to the elevator. That was just me. dragging my, you to the fuck out. Dragging me out. No, no, no. <laughs> no, I don't want to leave, right? And then you had teachings, chapter six. You got to do 14 years of teaching it. of passing all of the knowledge that you very, learned. Very interesting. Teaching right. was super, and I gave it my heart to it. Right. So I wanted them to learn. Right. And it's important because, again, it comes down to those guys. And I always told them. What you learn here, you're going to apply in it. And what you apply is going to make you a successful, successful agent. Or you can lose your life. And that's, the, that's what I say. It literally is life and death. Yeah. Again, we go back to that. Yeah. So, these aren't, so these aren't was, trivial I was, things. I was really into it. And, uh, yeah. And passing that knowledge along I is I was just, certified in state mm -hmm. as a law enforcement instructor in state and a, a certified as a law enforcement instructor in federal Right. I went, in fact, I went to to uh, Quantico, Virginia, the FBI Academy, to get my certification as a law enforcement instructor. Right. And I went to UTSA to get my state law enforcement instructor. Which is, so yeah, you could teach anywhere. You anywhere, teach any of anywhere that. Anywhere in the state, anywhere federally or state. Right. Yeah. So it's awesome. Yeah. And you got to teach internationally, which is... Very good. Even more. I mean, yeah. Because, yeah, again, I mean, you could teach... And that's the thing. We don't have a necessarily a teaching issue, especially when you were teaching classes on that. Yeah. Here, stateside, it's internationally where they really need yeah. the, the yeah. knowledge, the yeah. experience, and those sorts of and, things. And right? You know, uh, the, the whole thing about it is, is that in, there's so much corruption that you want to tell them about that. Yeah. You're going to wear a badge, honor that badge. Right. Okay? And mm -hmm. DEA, the police officer, the federal agents, Honor their badge, right? In the United States, in the United States. So you should be the same. You, it should be in your blood to defend the constitution of your country, right? And the laws. But then, the, then it comes down to we <coughs> talked about this: the plomo plata, well, right? Yeah, well, which is that's is that, scary it, reality yeah, in, in some fact, cases. We were in Tijuana, which is lead or silver, yeah, right? Yeah, they 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 they'll, they'll approach an agent or a supervisor more than anything else because they have the power. Yeah, and they'll say wanted to work with us, mm -hmm. give us protection, all right, so we wouldn't right. lose the loads. And they would offer them plomo or plata, lead or silver. Which is giving still, you, I guarantee. you a choice. Yeah, still, yeah. I guarantee that's going on yeah. down there. Uh, in right? fact, in Tijuana, we were teaching, of course, in Tijuana, and was it Waters? 
No, it wasn't Juarez. They gave us this Suburban, and we had a driver and a bodyguard sitting in the front seat, and Tommy and I on the back seat, and I look around, there's two other cars following us. Don't worry, he says, they're agents. Oh. I says, well, we shouldn't have that. You're actually pointing to something. If you've got a yeah. caravan of yeah. cars. So yeah. I told the, the, the guy at the academy, we don't need that much protection. We don't need just a guy and the driver, and, the, and that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you know, we want to make sure you're safe. I says we'll, we'll be safe, but when you have those guys, they're going to. It's an arrow pointing directly you're, at you. You're pointing at us. Yeah. So, so he took them off. Yeah, it's interesting though. So you start thinking about yeah, even even when you were because the drug dealers don't want you down there teaching how people how to interdict their drugs and yeah, stuff like yeah. that, right? Yeah. So so the the kind of the next chapter after you got done teaching is true retirement oh, life. Oh yes. Right. Well, I quit travel. I, yeah, I quit teaching in 2010 because yeah. my wife started getting sick. Right. And I wasn't going to put her in a home. No, no, no. Yeah, yeah exactly. So I, so I quit teaching and I right. told Tommy, you can go ahead and keep on. He says, no, you quit. I quit. We were like brothers, like I said. Yeah. He says, you quit. I quit. So I said, I'm quitting. I got to take care of my wife. And right. I did. I quit. Took care of her, bathed her, fed her, the whole For works. four years, right? Until, no, five. Or five years. Okay. 2015, she passed away. Yeah. I was feeding her when she passed yep. away. So. But that, that was sad. That was, I know. Yeah. I but understand. I, I took it very hard for about a week, 10 days. I, I, I wouldn't eat. I, I barely slept. I couldn't. It was very hurtful. Yeah. Then it finally gradually, you know, you, you learn that it's, it's happened. There's a reason for that. There's some sort of acceptance that has to come That's with it. it, right? You accept it. Yeah. You go on with life. Right. Right. So, and that's that's where we're at now, man. And it's so you bought the ranch. This you bought the ranch quite a number of years in, ago in, while you were teaching. So you've got the ranch. That's where we like to go out, and have fun. Yeah. Hang uh, out. Shoot, shoot beer, the shit. Drink some pee. beers. You don't get to drink anymore, but I get no, to drink beers. No, I don't drink. Yeah. And I've got this this love for that place. It's so relaxing being out there at night right. with a campfire going. Yeah, middle of nowhere. Yeah. yeah, and, you know, I brought friends out there, and they, they can't believe, like, yeah. I say it's in the middle of nowhere, and that's the point, right? Yes. And I think that is the point is to get oh, out no, there. Oh, no, it's so quiet. It is. You see every star yep. because there's no lights. Every star, shooting stars, there's so many all the time, but you don't even see them because of the right. light. You see, out there, you'll see there's one. Oh, there's yep. another one over here. You know, it's right? awesome. Yeah, yeah, it's awesome. So that's, that's that's part of kind of when we start talking about like, um, what's the legacy you wish to leave behind, right? And when we start thinking of those things, by no means is this the end. That this is the 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 book isn't finished uh, at this point, right? But when you start thinking about like, okay, what legacy do you want to leave behind, right? And I think you, I think. Just your work ethic and, and everything else could stand on its own. But if you were to say, like, this is what I want my family to have have gotten out of this, or the people that I've been involved in and met in, you know what I mean? And I, I don't know that that's really an easy you thing know, to say. I have a lot of friends, mostly most of them retired already, DEA yeah. friends, secretaries. They're wonderful girls. Yeah. Once I've known her since I started in 1971. Yeah. And she's still strong. She retired quite a few years ago, and I was still me. Yeah, along with other DE agents for luncheons every Wednesday. It's awesome. Yeah, and we talk about we, we we really don't talk too much about old cases. We just sit there and visit, have fun, yeah. and enjoy each other's company. Yeah, hamburgers or fried chicken or whatever. Right. Yeah, and, and of course there she is. She's a ramrod. She got us all together. Oh, she's the the linchpin for that. <laughs> yeah. So she's the one that got us all together. That's awesome. And, and anything that's happening in the DEA, she lets us all know. Yeah. She's got an ear for somewhere up there in Washington. She, she's just a great girl. Yeah. So So when you think about it, again, I'll ask you. The legacy I want to leave is that I was what do you a think? hard worker. Yeah. And that I love my family very much. Yeah. Okay. That I want them to know that everything I did was for my family. Mm -hmm. Okay. Absolutely. And so that's the legacy I want. To do. I want them to, to remember me as the guy who did everything that I could for them. That's awesome, and, and that's all. That's all you can ask, right? Yeah. And I think me being part of your family, I can attest to that. So, oh yes. So you know, we've talked a lot, and there's been a lot of 
kind of conversation back and forth and we've talked to, we've covered shit. It's been five hours of conversations, but there's a million more. We oh, could go yeah. on for hours and hours and hours oh, yeah. on many, all of the different cases that you've done and were, all of the experiences you've had. Some of the cases were funny. Yep. Some of the cases ended up with an arrest and a seizure, but the goings on before the seizure that were, were funny. Things that happened as you never planned those things, they just happened. Yeah. But they ended up being successful and we made the arrest right. and the seizure. Right. And we laugh about it later. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, but I mean, it's just something to be proud of and all of the goofy things that have happened and all of the seriously intense things that have happened. And, you know, um, so again, I want, who would you, so I'll, I'm just going to, as we kind of close this podcast, these five episodes out, and it's the first one we've done, last call for bars open. Um, thank you so much for doing this. And I appreciate you, you taking the time and allowing me to have a conversation. We've had over the years, we've had a million conversations and we've talked about all sorts of crazy shit. And I've always wanted to sit down and say, Hey, I, this, this is the whole reason I started this podcast. Yeah. Like the whole thing, like Beth and I goofing off on the other ones. This was to get us to here where I can have a conversation yeah. with you and we can start talking about the important things that happen that people do in their lives. Yeah. Right. You know, our work is a different world. Right. People have no idea what they we go through. They really don't. No. And now with all the rules and regulations that have, it'd be very hard now to be an agent. Yeah. Right? Yeah. But but people have no idea who we are unless you see it in the newspaper, DEA. Who the hell is DEA? You know, right. Some people don't even know. Right. Or they, they only see the shit that's on like Discovery yeah. Channel and it's and like a... I, I, I met this young man from India, worked for USAA. And he had been watching Narco. And when I met our conversation, he goes, what did you do? And I said, well, I was a DEA agent. Wow, I'm sitting with a DEA agent. So he took a picture of us and he called his wife in India. I've got a friend now who's the next DEA. <laughs> okay. You don't see it as a big deal, but no. like, it's a thing. It yeah. really is. He, he, last week he, fan man, yeah. he fanboyed over yeah. you. and yeah. <laughs> yeah, he left last week. He sent me a, a, a text. Yeah. It's been great knowing you. It's been a pleasure and an honor. That's he awesome. Says, I'm going back home. My wife is waiting for me. That's cool. So he left last week for India. But now you got a, you got a friend in India. Yeah. You know, it's one of those yeah. things. So, yeah. yeah. So I just want to let you dedicate this this whole five episodes. Who do you want to dedicate it to? To my wife. Okay. To Iris. Yep. That's it. Cheers. Hey, man. Thank you. It's been awesome. Thank you guys for hanging out with Albert and I over the last five weeks. It's been an incredible experience. It's emotional. It's cool. It's fun. We've had a lot of good laughs and it's some ups and downs and stuff like that. But we really do appreciate you guys hanging out. Uh, just shout out to all of our military first responders, frontline folks. Without all of you guys, none of this is possible. And I really want to thank you, Albert, for my pleasure. It was everything great. you've done for the United States for yeah. the people of the United States for local communities, for our family and everything as far as that goes. Oh, yeah. Thank you so One much. Of my best also pleasures was talking to the kids in the schools. Yeah. I got hundreds of letters from, from different students who yeah. wrote my speech. And they just on their own wrote me. Right. It's amazing. You've yeah. touched a lot of lives. Yeah. So it's been really incredible. So cheers, man. All right. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Love you, buddy. You guys take care. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.